close your eyes and focus on your breath. Watch the breath all the way in, watch it all the way out. Make sure you try to protect the breath here. In other words, protect the mind with the breath so it doesn't go wandering off. And look after the breath so that, it, so that it's comfortable. Not too long, not too short. You're not building up tension in the body as you breathe in, and you're not holding on to any tension as you breathe out. Let the breath be nourishing for the body. It keeps you alive, whether you look after it or not. But when you look after it, it does more for you. It can help give a greater sense of ease and well-being in the body, a greater sense of health. And the mind itself has a good place to settle down and be at its ease, too. And when you look after it, it looks after you. This is a basic principle of the Dharma. You practice the Dharma, the Dharma looks after you. What does it protect you from? Well, it protects you from your own defilements, your own greed, aversion, and delusion. These are the biggest dangers in the world. The dangers that come from other people, the dangers that come out from outside are nothing compared to the dangers you can do to yourself when greed takes over or when anger takes over. So you've got to learn how to protect yourself from these things, and that's why we give the mind another place to stay. Because the reason the mind has this, these feelings of greed and anger is because it's hungry. It goes out looking for whatever it can to stuff inside itself, but it gets a lot of scraps, things that people throw away, things that you sometimes steal from other people, none of which is good for you. And so instead we have to learn how to feed the mind inside, give it a good sense of well-being simply through the way you breathe. Allow that breath to fill the whole body. It puts the mind in a much better mood. It gives a much better place to stay right here, and you're a lot less hungry. You've got better food inside. And then when you look at the food that other people have to offer you, the things they spit out, you wouldn't want to eat it. Even if they give you something that looks good but you know has poison, you don't want to eat that either. And you're not feeling, you don't feel tempted. And this way you can begin to trust yourself more, because this is one of the scariest things in life, is that now that things are going relatively well in your life, you're okay, but who knows, when things get really, really difficult, are you willing to harm other people? Are you willing to harm? There's going to be stealing. There's going to be all kinds of things that you can do that you might feel tempted to do because things are difficult. But if you've trained yourself to have a sense of well-being that comes from within, you're not tempted by things outside. You realize that what little benefit you might get from breaking the precepts is going to have a lot of trouble following it on into the future. So you don't want it. You're willing to make sacrifices out, outside right now for the sake of your long-term happiness. And when the mind has a much better sense of happiness in, within, simply by the way you breathe, by the way you focus the mind inside, by the way you understand what's going on in the mind, that way you're a lot less likely to do things that are going to be dangerous. So this is how the Dharma looks after you, protects you from your own defilements, protects you from the harm that can come from your own defilements. And that's the most important thing you need protection from in your life. So protect this point of focus in your meditation. Look after it, take care of it, and it's going to take care of you. <laughs>